Hello and welcome back to Retro Break. In today's video I'm going to be taking you on a tour of Revival Gaming Legends 2019 which was on last weekend at Bank Stadium in Warsaw. I had an amazing time at the show and I'm going to start here at the top of the hall and as you can see already there's loads of amazing retro computers and the first store we come to here is actually called ZX Renew and they specialise in refurbishing and reviving old ZX Spectrum consoles and you can see a few of the systems here that they've fixed up here's a close up of them I love the different colours that they've put on the shelves I think they also replaced the keys and they have these amazing little screens to turn them into sort of mini spectrum laptops which is just really cool the next door here is called Retro Gear and they have a website retrogear.co.uk and they had some really cool stuff available here as you can see there's a Japanese Sega Saturn there and a Game Boy printer unfortunately there wasn't any paper though there's also a Famicom Twin there as well, and a Mega Drive joystick, and um, a Wiz GP, GP32 as well. And then we've got a Famicom in the corner, a few uh, boxed Game Boy Colors, and a whole load of Amiibos as well. And there was a few boxes under the table with mostly Spectrum games, but I did find a box on the other side which had some Commodore 64 games in. Uh, I didn't end up picking any up though, but it's cool to see. There you go, so I'm going down to have a look now. Um, if you see any games there that you think are worthwhile getting, let me know, and I'll definitely look out for them next time. And here's a box of Super Famicom games, and a few SNES games as well, there was Stunt Race FX. Let me know if you see anything that catches your eye here. Saw Turok at the back there on the N64, and there's a few more ZX Spectrums that are for sale, ZX Spectrum Plus, and I think they had the original down there as well. I'm not sure what those things were there on the left, so if you know what they are, let me know. And there's also a few Commodore joysticks. And here's another look at some of the retro computers that were in the middle of the room before we go and take a look at some more of the stalls. Here's um, a Commodore, I'm not sure what type. Um, I'm not really too clued up on the retro computer side of things. But this next one coming up was amazing, listen to this. That was just so cool being hooked up to that hi-fi system. And here we have another unknown computer, an acorn something, playing a clone of Flappy Birds, but unfortunately somehow I managed to break the game and it just came up with an error screen, so I don't know what I did wrong. Uh, but it did seem really good for the few seconds that I actually managed to play it, but I had no idea how to get back into the game which was a bit annoying, so I just typed hi instead. And there you can see at the back of the hall in the first room they had a big projector and they were playing some Street Fighter 2 on it and later on they were also playing some football game on there as well and here's another look and here's some of the arcade cabinets these ones you actually had to sign up for and take part in some sort of tournament I didn't really have a look at it which is a shame because I would have liked to try and compete in some of the tournaments because I think I'm fairly good at some arcade games there we have a Turbo Graphics with what I assume is some sort of EverDrive and here's another Amiga, a computer that I'd love to get at some point, but it's just trying to find the space for one at the minute. And here's a Dragon 32, which is another computer that we're very glad to see at the show. This one was playing Frogger. The only reason I'm interested in the Dragon 32 is the fact that my uncle actually bought me a t-shirt with the logo on, and I didn't know what it was at the time, so there we go, now I know. And here's another Amiga, Commodore Amiga, playing, I'm not sure what that was playing, Megalomania or something and this one's got R-Type 2 on it and here's another look at that screen at the back playing some Street Fighter and they were actually um, announcing what was going on during the event there as well and now we get to the next um, market store which was on the other side of the room as you can see there there was a CDI that was for sale Sega Dreamcast complete in box for £80 that's not too bad I don't think and here's some PS1 games like I say in all these videos, I'm not too sure about what games are good for the PS1 or not, so let me know if you see anything in there. I can definitely try and pick it up next time I'm at one of these events. And there's some more Dreamcast games there in the middle. These were really cool actually, these are 3D printed uh, game characters and logos. I managed to pick the Game Boy Color one up, I think it's really cool. I do wish I'd picked a few more up actually, I really like them. And here's some PS2 games, and a box of more Spectrum games maybe and a few SNES and N64 games here as well 
loads of great games. Unfortunately, at this point, I pretty much have all the games that I want for those systems. And here's a look at some of the more expensive games at the back. I see Ease the Van Vanished Omens on the Master System and Ultima 4 as well. They're two games that I want for that system. And just around the corner here was some arcade cabinets, including this really interesting one called Fire Truck. We weren't quite sure how to play it at first, but it turns out that it's a two-player game. So one person, as you can see here, I'm sat at the front, and I'm actually steering the front of the truck. And then my friend Jack was actually using the other steering wheel to control the back of the truck. And I don't think we actually managed to get to the end of the level, which was a bit disappointing, but it was definitely a really interesting arcade machine that I'd never seen before. And here's a look at some of the Vectrex units they had at the show. It was really cool actually, they had a really, really good uh, showing for the Vectrex. There was some really nice custom uh, displays as well. And I actually got to try, well that one was one that was supposed to be being played sideways, but we accidentally went back to the menu and lost the game we were supposed to be playing on it. This one was really cool, this one was like a custom front with an overlay but it's actually got some lights on the side that light it all up really nice and kind of give it some colour. I really like that, I thought that looked really cool. As you can see there, it's playing Minefield, which is basically Vectrex's version of Asteroids. And there you go, if you want to check them out, they're called Blacklighter, I think. And here is the Vectrex 3D goggles, which I actually did get a chance to try. And it was really impressive, actually. Basically, you've probably heard of it before, it's got a spinning disc that spins around and it kind of gives the illusion of 3D and it sort of gives colour to the uh, to the vectors as well. So that's it for the first half of that room. Now we're going down to the bottom um, where the where there was a bar and there was also ZX Spectrum next. And I did a little bit of a video about that in my Play Expo Manchester episode. So definitely go and watch that one if you want to hear a little bit more about the system and some of the games that are coming out for it. I really love the look of these. I'm probably going to get one when they come out. And I like the fact that they've actually sort of repurposed these PlayStation Vita boxes to make it look like official releases. I didn't actually play on any of them, but I did have a look and watch some people playing it, and I do think it's really cool. And um, there's definitely a lot of good stuff coming out for the Spectrum recently. And here's something really cool, these were at Play Expo as well. And over here, another game stall. Um, there's a nice overview of the stall there, and then we'll go down and take a look at some of the Game Boy games. There we go. So, like I said, let me know if there's anything that catches your eye. There's some Pokemon games, there's all the Rayman games for the Game Boy, and there was uh, there was a folder there that I was having a flick through, and some Dreamcast games here. Um, once again, I've kind of got all the Dreamcast games that I want already. Now, this was kind of interesting, this game that Callum was having a look at on the Game Boy there. It didn't have anything on the cart. It, it actually turned out to be some really weird Mario clone thing. Uh, we can see it there, so I'm not really sure what it was, I kind of wish I'd picked it up, it looks like some sort of demo cart. And Jack there was showing Moon for the DS, which is quite a rare game, so I was really uh, excited to see that one, but I didn't pick it up. And there's some more DS games there, if you want to take a look at those. I see Bomberman Land. Juice 2 was a good one, when I was a bit naughty and used the R4 card, so don't tell anyone. And there's a look at some GameCube games. See Tetris Worlds a few times there, I haven't actually got it on the GameCube, I've got it on the Game Boy Advance though, so maybe that's one I could look for in the future. And here's a look at some of the PSP games that they had on this shelf as well. Let me know if you saw anything interesting. It's another system I'd like to try and get a few more games for, I do really like the PSP. And back here in the corner they had some ZX Spectrum games, some obscure systems, some CD games, Mega CD, um, 3DO, that sort of thing, and some big box PC games as well, which is always cool to see. And now we're right in the corner here, and we're taking a look at Fusion. They made their own uh, sort of mini magazines. I picked one of them up, issue one, I think, and Freeze 64 was there as well, but unfortunately I was going to go back and meet the writer, but I kind of forgot to go back. So if you're watching this, I'll see you at the next event. And on the other on the other side of that uh, table there was some more retro computers. There's a Commodore 64 there, and one of those ZX Spectrums with the nice little screens on. And here's another look at a Spectrum as well. There's the one with the with the keyboard. Callum got a bit confused because the game asked you to press left, and it turns out that the Spectrum doesn't have a left key, so <laughs> couldn't get very far in that game. 
But you did get it to work eventually. It was asking whether, what key you want to be left. So there you go. A little bit of a game that looked a bit like Star Fox. And here's a look at some of the merchandise and Blu-rays for sale uh, for the Commodore story, which I presume is some sort of documentary about the Commodore 64. I kind of wish I'd picked that up because I do really enjoy watching those sort of interview style things. And now we're moving into the second hall here. So we go across this corridor and into where the cafe was. So going through here, this is where the cafe was. And there was also this one stall on the left and a few arcade cabinets over there. And as you can see out the window, yes, this was at a football stadium. And yes, this is the closest I've ever got to watching a football match. So the first stall we come to just around the corner in the corridor is this little stall that was tucked away that had some really cool stuff for sale. As you'll see in just a second, this uh, special edition at the top here, this Gran Turismo 5, looked really cool. And it was actually fairly cheap as well, I kind of wish I'd picked that up. There was some other really cool stuff here. As you can see, Xeno Saga 1 and 2 for the PlayStation 2 there. A load of Mega Drive games. I saw the Blaze Mega Drive uh, handheld system there and a Mega Drive 2 controller. And some Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color games on this side. A few Game Gear games and a Game Boy printer with paper for once. Oh, I, I kind of wish I'd picked that up as well, but I only really need the paper, not the actual printer itself. There's some other stuff on the shelf to look at. There's a few SNES games, a few GameCubes. And then here, this was the next stall that we came to in this corridor. This one had one very exciting thing that I picked up. You might be able to make it out in a second. I won't give the game away. I'll be doing my pickups video next week, or maybe in the middle of next week, but it's in that box there. So see if you can guess what it was. I have to say it's probably the most interesting game that I've picked up for a while. It may not be the best game, but it's definitely one of the most interesting ones that I, that I own. Really looking forward to doing a video on it in the future as well. And now we get to the inside of the second hall, and this was uh, one of the tables here when we came in. It's got a few custom made items, which is always really cool to see. I always kind of wish that I'd pick something like this up for the game room, because it is really nice to have something unique. And they also had this box here in the corner which had some video game soundtracks on CD and on vinyl. So I'm just going to flick through a few of these here so you can see what some of the soundtracks were. There's Mario and Rabbids one. Not sure what that one is, but the cover definitely looks interesting. Uh, Watch Dogs, there's a Contra soundtrack as well. Uh, I know I'd really like to get a vinyl player. Um, I'll see a few more of these later on at another store as well. I always think it'd be really cool to get some of these because I'd love uh, video game soundtracks in general and I just think having um, a record like that the the cover art and everything is so much cooler than what you can get with a CD and obviously if you just get the digital soundtrack you don't get any of that stuff and as a collector I do really like the idea of it but it's very expensive especially if you want to get a good one and there was a, just a quick look through some of the CDs there I think most of them came from Club Nintendo which I already have most of them and now this was a really good stall as well. This one had all sorts of crazy things. I think this one's called Sore Thumb Retro Gaming, Sore Thumb Gamers, something like that. I'll put a link in the description. I can't remember if I picked anything up from this stall. I probably did. Um, and here's a closer look at some of the custom Dreamcast games. I thought these were kind of interesting. So this one here was the Mega Man Complete Collection. And this was actually... Like a Dreamcast game that had an emulator installed on it and it's got all of the Me all of the Mega Man games. And there's the same there with the Neo Geo emulator and all the Metal Slug games on it. And one with all the Mario NES games. And I think there was actually a lot more than just Mario on that one by the looks of that list on the back. And up here on the back shelf is some of the more expensive and rare games. Let me know if you see anything that caught your eye. There's a Biohazard 3 there on the PS1. And a few games that I recognised from at the top that I've got as well. And I just saw that Mega Drive game there called Fat Man. I've got no idea what that one's about. If any of you guys know what that game is, definitely let me know in the comments. It would be very interesting. I might actually go and Google that one afterwards. And here's another look at some of those rare games at the back. There was a Puzzle and Bubble game there. I'm not sure what that system is though. Maybe the um, Neo Geo CD, possibly. And there's a few gaming related t-shirts here. I love that Prodius one that I just went past there and I kind of wish I'd picked that one up. That would be really cool, and I'd love to do a video on Proteus at some point. It's one of my favourite shoot 'em up series by Konami. And what have we got at this stall? We've got some 
a bit of everything really, by the looks of it. There's a boxed Commodore Amiga 500 there, and someone's buying something, I think that's Jack. Oh yeah, he's buying Custom Robo Arena, which is one of the games that he grew up with on the DS. And he actually got um, a DSi XL for a really good price for 35 from a store, which we'll get to in a minute. And he's very, very happy with that pickup. Down there, there's a Philips uh, Panasonic, sorry, 3DO. That's another system that I'd really like to get. But apart from Need for Speed, I don't really know which games are worth getting for the 3DO. So let me know in the comments if there's any 3DO games that I should consider getting in the future. Now, this one at the back here, there's a lot of Mega Drive games. You can see Golden Axe 2, Micro Machines, loads of classic games in there. Unfortunately, I think I've got all of the affordable games now, so I have to look at the back of the stalls where all these expensive games are, unfortunately. There was Rez on the Dreamcast, that's one that I want, but slightly out of my price range at the minute. And there's a Conker's Bad Fur Day as well. Luckily, I got that game as a present, so I've never actually had to buy it myself, but I do see the prices for that going up considerably recently. It's kind of crazy. And there's the Game Boy Money Box. I've actually got that Game Boy Money Box. Right next to me, actually. I actually put my change from this event in it. And now we're looking at Vintage Gamer, which was by far our favourite uh, shop slash market stall at the event. As you can see in this cabinet here, they've got some great games. I just went past Chrono Trigger for the DS, which was 50 quid. I'm not sure if that's a good price or not. I think it's a fairly decent price. Uh, if you guys want to see some more of Vintage Gamer, I actually did a tour of their shop on my channel a while ago, so definitely go back and watch that. One of the best game shops that I've ever been to. It really was great, and I've actually said to my friend that we're definitely going to go and take him there one day so that he can see it for himself. And they actually told me that they've got a second location there, which they'll take us to as well, which is also full from floor to ceiling of games, so that's going to be a fun day out. And this box here, I really enjoyed looking through this. This was a load of Atari Lynx games. I actually picked one of them up that I was looking for. It was that one there, Gates of Zendikon. And it actually seems like a really good game, so I'll definitely try and get some gameplay footage of that for my pickups video, which is coming later. And here's... Oh, there's the game that I picked up, Gates of Zendikon. Unfortunately, my camera seems to be struggling to focus a bit recently, so I might think about upgrading that at some point in the future. Here's some of their NES and SNES games. What I found with this shop, everything's super reasonably priced and they also do really good deals. Like I said, they did a great deal for my friend Jack who bought that, um, that DS and they actually gave me a really good deal on some stuff that I picked up as well. They, they went under the table and brought out a box of Japanese GBA games for me to look at. So I picked a few of them up and I think I got a really good price on them. So that was really nice of them, they're a brilliant shop. And as you can see, they've got so much stock. It was... I could have easily spent the entire event just looking around this one stall, honestly. There's another bag of DS games there and some PSP games that Jack was having a flick through. On the lookout for one in particular, I think. I can't remember which one it was. And there's also some uh, Japanese PS1 games there as well, by the looks of it. And loads of boxed systems across the back. As you can see there, there was a Panasonic Q, which is one system that I would love to get one day. But they're just crazy expensive, but definitely worth it. I've been lucky enough to try one a few times, and I do think it's an amazing system. There's me showing Azure Dreams, 120 quid. And Jack telling me to go for it. Maybe one day. I would love to be rich enough just to buy anything. I wanted when I found it, that would be the dream. And there was a nice box of SNES games there that I had a nice flick through. And some GameCube games and some Super Famicom stuff. An Amiga CD32, another console that I don't have. I love finding ultra rare things like this in random boxes on a table. It's just so cool. Just in a random box. And yeah. Finding Ninja Spirits in a box randomly, that's that's always a highlight of these sort of events. Just, you never know what you're going to come across. And there, on the on the top left there, was some more of the records that I was talking about earlier. There's one there for Gunstar Heroes. Couldn't quite see what the other two were, it was quite dark down here, so... I'm kind of surprised the camera managed to pick anything up, to be honest. And here's some 32X games, another system that I'd love to own at some point in the future. 
They actually had a really good selection of 32X games there. And that's it for Vintage Gamer. We've got to get on to the rest of the show. As you can see, there were some arcade machines there, which I'll do a quick run through in a bit. And my second favourite stall of the show, this Japanese game stall. This guy is at pretty much all the same events that I've been to, so I've had a flick through these games before. And there's another one that if I was rich enough, I would just buy that. No questions asked. Fantastic Night Cotton on the Dream on the uh, PC Engine CD, a game that I've always wanted. And as you can see, this store is just an absolutely amazing, jam-packed with the best um, Japanese games that you can find. There's Clockwork Night on the Saturn, another one of my favourites. Only 10 quid as well, fantastic price for that game. Clockwork Night is brilliant. If you've got a Sega Saturn and you haven't played it, definitely go and get it. And there's a Micro Machines game for the CDI, which is a system that I really need to get back into, but unfortunately I've only got the really rubbish controller for it, so I need to get um, a proper gamepad before I can really enjoy some of the games on that. And yes, there are a few games that you can actually say you'd enjoy. And this was the store next to it. They had a lot of PlayStation 1 games. Let me know if you see anything interesting for the PS1. Like I've said in some of these videos before, I'm not big into the PS1, so I don't really know what's worth collecting or not. So definitely let me know. There's also some Master System games there as well. And a Japanese Saturn, again. There seems to be quite a few Japanese Sega Saturns going around at this event. And some PAL Saturn games and some Dreamcast games. And there's, I think Callum was looking at Endless Ocean on the Wii, one of my favourite games. And again, just to show you, we're at Football Stadium. Which I always found kind of weird, looking through all the games and then looking up out the window to see a football pitch. And I'm not so much looking at the games here, but I love the idea of getting one of these DVD display cases to put some of my games in in the game room. I just think that would look fantastic. And now we're taking a look at some of the arcade cabinets. And a look at some of the consoles that were out in the middle of this room. There was so much to see and do. We didn't really actually play that many games, but you definitely could have spent all day just playing the games here. And I was really excited to see Sky Skipper here as well. I'm sure a lot of you already know the story of Sky Skipper, but if you don't, there's a fantastic video where they actually showed off... Um, the making of that cabinet, it was basically a lost Nintendo arcade game and some arcade makers and fans had got together to recreate it and they actually revealed it at the Manchester Arcade Club so I'll link that video in the description if I remember, it's definitely worth watching the excitement in that room at the time was just really cool to see I wish I was there for the unveiling actually and there was a look at um, an, an, a few Atari consoles there's someone trying to get an Atari 2600 to work Good luck with that. And there was also this DJ playing some chip tune music on the stage, which was cool. And some more arcade machines here, some racing games by looks of it. And I think I see Street Fighter there in the corner as well on a Sega Astro City, I think. Maybe. A lot of Street Fighter 2 and a few shoot 'em ups. Can't quite make out what they are. I think that's 1942. And there was um not Ikaruga, maybe Dodonpachi or something and don't know what that was, some football game Metal Slug on the Neo Geo CD Bubble Bubble some light gun games going on there, I think that's Time Crisis maybe not, it was on the Saturn, I'm not sure and of course Asobi Tech was there as always displaying some of his rarer consoles and selling his Pocket Pixels t-shirts as well I didn't get the memo, but both my friends were wearing their Pocket Pixels t-shirt and I felt kind of bad not wearing mine, so... Next time I'll definitely wear it if you're going to be at one of these events, because I really do like them. And there's the um, Samsung Nuon console as well that I saw at the Play Expo. And here's another pan of the other side of the room. And of course there's a lot more game sellers around here as well, so let's go and take a look at some more games. There's Jack. Having a look at some PSP games, he found Popper LaCroix, which is one of his favourites. There's some more PS1 games there as well. Feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at uh, any of these games. Hopefully the quality is good enough. I tried to move the camera slow enough so you can try and make everything out without it becoming blurry. So Hopefully I did a good job with the, with the camera quality here. 
There's some of the more rarer games at the back again. There's Azure Dreams on the PS1. That's the game I'd like to get at some point. And a few Dreamcast and Mega Drive games there. And some Game Boy games. There's actually a lot of Dreamcast games here. And there you go. There's one spoiler for my pickups video. The next Tetris on the Dreamcast. That's a game I've been looking for for a long time. And at the back there you can see some rarer GameCube games. And this was actually one of the only stores that had some modern games as well. There were some PS4 games there, if you could make them out. And a load of Mega Man games on the PS1 back there as well. I'd love to get the Mega Man Legends games at some point. That's always very high up on my list. And Bubble Bubble on the SNES. That game is crazy expensive, but it's one that I'd really like to get. I loved playing it on the PC back in the day, on Windows 95. And up there, there's some Japanese Saturn games. I kind of skipped forward a bit here. I think the store was somewhere else, but I didn't quite know where to place it in the video. There was Dodon Patchy. I picked up Don Patchy for the Sega Saturn before, but I've never actually got Dodon Patchy officially. So I'd really love to get that one at some point, but again, it's one of them games that's getting crazy expensive. And there was another Proteus game back there as well. And, and I would like to get all the Proteus games at some point in the future, if possible. And here's uh, one of the many boxes of PSP games that were on the floor. Unfortunately, I don't really think there was anything that interesting in this one. And here's some uh, Game Boy games back here. I saw Legend of the River King there. That's a really good fishing RPG. This one was really cool to see. This is Starhawk, a very, very rare Game Boy game. I've actually got the game, but only the car. I was kind of tempted to ask how much they wanted just for the manual, but I kind of doubted they'd want to sell it separately. And this stall at the back here, these are always at the different events. This one's called Game Boy Shack. Absolutely fantastic stall. If you're looking for a Game Boy game, this is the place to come. I think they've also got a website and you can order online. I picked up a few games from them and they actually had a lot of really good boxed games at the back there, which I'm taking a bit of a closer look at. I was kind of tempted to get Oracle of Seasons, but it was quite expensive. It's the only Zelda game that I don't have, actually. And they also had these boxes here called Retro Dirt, which was basically just stuff that he wanted to get rid of, I think. And there was also, around the back here, there was some Game Boy Carry cases and things. And unfortunately, I didn't get it on the camera, but they were selling a lot of repro games for the Game Boy, which was really cool to see. And the last store we're getting to here this is um, a modern store, and I'll get to it in, an, in a second. The Game Boy on the end there looks absolutely amazing. As do the Game Gears and the Nomads. Uh, I would love to just buy everything on this stall if I had the money. But yeah, this Game Boy on the end, apparently this is a new thing. They've managed to get a bigger screen into the original Game Boy, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. So I'm definitely going to pick one of them up at the next event they're at. And to finish this video off, here's some pinball tables. I really hope you enjoyed watching this tour and stay tuned because next Friday I'm going to be uploading my pickups. So thank you so much for watching, don't forget to comment, subscribe and I'll see you next week for another episode. Goodbye.